สวัสดีครับ and welcome to this follow-up video where I share some of the film photos that I've taken at Chinatown. But first, I would like to share the cameras that I use and the gears. So first off, we have this Vivitar camera um, XV1, where I use the 50 millimeter f/2, which is on the Fujifilm XT1. Right now, filming uh, another perspective angle when I present some of the film photos. And I only use one roll of film on that camera. And the second camera that I use is the Olympus OM10. And then I use the 28mm F2 camera. In this case, I was trying to use zone focusing. And since it was a sunny day, I use around F11 or F16 when it's outdoors and not in the shade. And with zone focusing, there's tabs over here so that you know the zone of where the images would be sharp. So since we're at F11, so we're from infinity to around one meter will be relatively in focus. And for in the shade area in the markets, I'll just stop down around f4 or maybe even 2.8 in which case I'll be manually focusing much more but right now I'm just using this Fuji Pro 400 but this one is not yet finished around 24 films so far and we'll maybe try to take more photos when things clear up and so we just have this lady selling um, porridge and food in her shop stand though with the zone focusing the background is a little bit more in focus than her face here I saw that some of the shops are open and not open which just gives some nice geometric shapes on the life of the different floors of each of the buildings though I wasn't really able to get like the motorcycle in frame to have some movement move on and found these trees growing around the side of the wall and found it to be quite interesting on the different shapes that they grow around and through that wall and the fire hydrant being untouched and unflinching let's say so this one I this one I like it a little bit more Though I do wish I could make it a little bit darker in retrospect. And so some of these photos that there's really no commentary or no feeling about it, I'll just sort of move along. And so with the next few scenes and three photos, I just saw this sort of interesting building and um, different shadows because of the MRT entrance station. I wanted to see how it would interact with the people passing by. Going on to a different perspective, now there's just much more interest in the different lifestyles, once again, in each of the houses. Though, I don't think the shadow or contrast This sort of family photo that I quite like a little bit more just shows a um, family who owns one of the shops that they're standing in front of um, talking to the child and another mother and child uh, close by also um, sort of touring around as well. I found this scene where it's like just people chilling, relaxing inside the tuk-tuk and so wanting to sort of frame them 
within another tuk-tuk and I think it's sort of pretty cool that there was another motorcycle lady right at the edge of the frame and caught her just in time and there's just a lot of sort of places your eye could sort of wander around to see the different elements in this picture. This next one is a little bit of a miss. The car was just coming a little bit too fast and so I couldn't really capture the people inside of the truck. This one's now like finally walking forward and just zone focusing and taking like a little bit higher from the hip but I wasn't really looking through the view not viewfinder but through the lens and sort of shot a little bit too high this next photo I really like this how the sun shines on his hair and that he's quite sharp and again it's very bright on this day and even at f11 the shutter speed was pretty much at max around 500 of a second or even a thousand sometimes at a very small aperture and just got him and his legs sort of spread out so it's like showing that he's walking this one now is like a little bit more in the shade and so it's a little bit more blurry at that point so this is the next set of film from the Vivitar camera that I was talking about and here shooting in black and white in the next location and this is using the film K400 under the rooftop I was I must be using a wider aperture capturing this woman lighting up um, things to you be used for prayers and there's a little bit of background blur which I think it came out a little bit okay though the person behind her I'll say is a little bit too close to her and I wish that person would be a little bit to the right side a little bit more separated in the next one have this man so sort of praying um, again in front of the candles and the Buddha not in the frame actually but with the lens I think it, there's like better separation between him and the people in the background and I think this one came out uh, nicely now out of the temple <laughs> now this is a little bit much much harder trying to sort of zone focus and shoot from the hip using a 50 millimeter and so just got this man but the I don't think it's anything too good a little bit of a miss but it's not as blurry as one would expect using a, a 50 millimeter and trying to aim from the hip Now with another salesperson, um, a little bit farther away, so it's much easier to focus. And sadly, I think the the people in the background made her um, not as clear, and it's a little bit too distracting. But besides that, um, I think it came out a little bit okay. Just needed to wait a little bit longer. So in the next photo it's a little bit more interesting when I'm like looking at it at first because there are different people in different exposures so starting from the woman on the right hand side um, kneeling a little bit forward and also the second thing is that each of the three persons are at different positions when doing the same prayer action so the woman on the left is kneeling a little bit forward um, I believe she was already finished praying so she's sort of coming forward to place I forgot her name but the the thing that they hold to pray and with the lights on the right hand side just gives this 
cut in the frame to bring the viewers back to the people who are praying but if anything I still should have moved the camera a little bit to the to the left to show where they're facing right now they're facing to the left but it's kind of cut short and it would be better if the subjects the people praying are on the right side of the frame and there's more room on the left side to show where they're facing and this next photo is <laughs> a little bit of a lucky one and standing still and this person just walks through uh, showing themselves from the tree and we just have this umbrella framing on the right side the tree on the left side and even the sign at the background uh, another frame that sort of helps cut through and show the person and this old lady standing there and looking directly at the camera and even the um, sort of the, these signs for cars to drive into the parking lot has this curve pointing directly at her once again if anything there's a little bit too much space up top I think that the eye would wander to but I sort of think that the trees and their curve going down helps to sort of block the eyes from wandering too far so this next set of photos are some people um, praying with the monk and the monk is also sort of praying for them sadly I think the monk is a little bit too blurry and I did not land the focus um, as I would want to especially for a scene where people are standing still so I wish he were a little bit more in focus the second one I think is more focused but between these two photos like one that does a little bit better in framing and being a little bit straight while the second one even though it's in focus sadly I went a little bit too high and did not straighten the image when taking it plus the monk was facing the other way which I don't really like as much this one walking to one of these police stations I believe that is also for a cemetery and on the top floor has a temple well not temple but a place for prayers for people who pass on and those who are visiting to come and pray and when walking up to the stairs there's these set of stairs going down and just saw this woman just right at the edge and just thought that this could have been like a interesting sort of scene of looking down and what is the mystery down there um, where this person is just right on the edge of the frame of the door and just many sort of lines framing the person inside now at the top floor um, there were a bunch of scarecrows right before we left so try to just wait for the scarecrow to do something um, getting the crow to speak up basically which I think was um, and still a good silhouette kind of image since this the crow was opening its beak and it's very black against the white building in the background so here is the next photo one of the statue of the Buddha on the rooftop but not exactly the place where people pray there's around two places this is just one of them and one of the smaller ones just a simple scene um, nothing too special <laughs> This next one is also one that I think needs a bit more analysis on my part. And we just stopped by at this sales um, person that does these sweets and it was quite refreshing. So with the old lady in the middle, just slightly framed it from the bar quite heavily silhouetted though her 
shades still reflect through showing where her eyes would be and that she's kind of like looking at us at the same time the person behind her his face isn't covered by the hat so he still pops out and not a distraction I think just one of the people in the scene that has his own thing going on um, looking again towards the woman to the right and the woman to the right is like has her back on us so it's like the the man in the middle above is like looking to the woman and the woman back at him and then the old lady towards us and it just has like this thing where the eye could just go around and just explore what's going on so while people are just hanging around eating their sweets this just gives an opportunity to take photos of people walking through this area crossing the streets and this is just one of them once again with the Vivitar and just have this what I, I really like this one just because of how sharp it is and even the woman to the right in the background is also slightly blurry because of I think it's not as uh, um, shallow aperture that I than I thought or maybe it's just a 50 millimeter but in any case the car in the background still has this movement blur to it that I think helps because if it were sharp it would then um, be a little bit too distracting because our eyes are still so sort of focused on the sharpest thing and the clearest thing in the image which is the lady in the middle and with the car sim simply blurry it helps being blown out as well as the background and I think the curvature of the car itself and the headlights also gives this framing stop for the viewer to stay dead center in the image itself. If it were um, like right and touches her face basically or tangent I'll say like the headlight is right on her forehead or something if it drove a little bit or I captured this a little bit too slow then it would be like a major distraction but because they're separated between foreground and background I think it works uh, much better so this next photo again so we're standing in a similar position um, turning a little bit away from the street and just have this person um, again watching the the cars passing by when it's the safe time to move on and again the old lady that he's with um, her face isn't blocked too much we can still see so sort of both her eyes and face and I think if she was covered even more it would sort of detract from the photo either being distracting but because her face is still quite clear I think it's sort of a, a plus that we see these two people together watching out for the cars and then planning to like move forward this next photo is shooting from the other side so across the street so this is just how big the road is inside the soy very tight and only one car can pass through and so this guy when I like saw him just his face is just perfectly light up um, from the Sun and the rest of his head behind is sort of in shadow and I thought oh wow this is like like a perfect image basically though the contrast of the film I suppose and how it turned out isn't as heavily contrast as I initially expected which is both good and bad the good is that it's low 
lower contrast and I could simply add more contrast if I choose to edit the image once again like I'm showing the film here and then the images that you see are all unedited as well just straight scanned from the shop that cleans uh, process the film so this one is also like one of my favorite photos now the other people are like facing away so if they were facing towards the camera we see their face I think there would be a distraction but because their backs are showing um, there's nothing really to see so we just go back to the main the main person in the middle this next photo is again another person walking by and it's an okay photo I suppose um, nothing to say compared to the previous ones but at least it's like not blurry or it's not sharp but it's I think more a little bit more average this one I like much more it's just a little bit interesting on where is this guy looking at he's sort of looking a little bit of ahead of him and then the scooter itself I never really seen before and the background posts are not really sticking out his head as much which I find to be a, just a good thing and uh, once again the people in the background aren't too distracting and dragging attention away from the main subject this next photo is uh, another interesting one on how the monk that I'm trying to focus on is sort of framed like right between these two motorcycle riders and I would sort of wish that I could like move a little bit to the left so that the framing is a little bit more centered but let me know what you think I do think that the motorcycle on the motorcycle rider on the right hand side is leaning a little bit too much to the left um, blocking the monk himself and wish that there was a little bit more separation maybe if he saw a face forward like the motorcycle rider to the left that we just see two blank helmets and then the monk dead center and maybe like since he's also bald it's like have all these smooth curves <laughs> on their heads but in any case I wanted to test out the, this film never shot across before and saw this uh, scene where this cleaning lady was managing some of her equipment and wanted to see how the texture on the this cover would look in film and it's just the various dynamic range trying the second photo again I think this one is a little bit more interesting alongside with the blurry moving motorcycle within the scene and the framing of the background and the roof is a little bit more straight so I think this one is a, the better photo now going to the outside just this uh, couple walking through um, the lady putting on her helmet about to get on the motorcycle sadly with the black car at the back um, the guy's helmet kind of just blends in with the car black car at the back if the car were white I think it would give like a artificial silhouette of the man's black helmet which would separate him from the car even better This one is something <laughs> that I came a little bit too close to the person. Again, just walking past at around f11, f16, and in this case, I should have at least practiced for next time to have uh, another zone focus. And I think it's called hybrid zone focusing, if I'm not mistaken. 
Ulysses Aoki. Sorry for the bad pronunciation, but I took these film photos before his video about zone focusing, but I only learned the term of hybrid hyper focus distance, where you have a second zone focus for closer distance subjects. And that would have been really handy for this situation where I knew I was getting very close to this person so I should have changed my zone focusing to be the close zone focus compared to my normal zone focusing which is more for the 1 meter to infinity. So the hybrid hyperfocus, the other zone would be whatever the furthest to be 1 meter and then the closest is whatever number that is. So if I were to use this Olympus camera again and let's just sort of check one more time. So I would be at let's say F11 just for simplicity. The zone focus would be at 1 meter to infinity and then the close one would be like 0.05 or 0.6 to 1 meter and then that would or should at least get me like a sharp image on this old man but because this isn't like Leica with the dials on top it might be a much much harder to like practice like close far close far This next photo again is just a family photo. <laughs> nice sort of divide between like the father looking to the left and then the boy looking to the right. And the mother a little bit blurred looking to the left just like the father. Though I do feel and wish that there were at least one more subject on the right hand side with the boy at least walking to the right so that we have like two people looking to the left and two people looking to the right right now it's still a little bit unbalanced because when looking at this photo i just see like this old man leading the way for this younger person who's like a little bit more stylish and then you could just add more and more meaning and story into it of like or the generation work harder kind of deal um, leading the way for the younger generation etc so I'll just like keep it short like that this is at least the first time that I sort of interpret the photo when I first saw it after it was scanned speaking about composition wise I still feel that the the area on the right hand side is a little bit too empty and that the woman or person who's walking the other direction is cutting between these two um, male characters who are sort of moving forward so if she was or this person I, I'm not sure like if it's a woman or man if that person walking the opposite direction could be on the left side I think it would like fill in the the, the composition much better but right now with her even though it's quite okay that like she's not like popping out and like quite centered between these two subjects um, I think she standing there still m makes another layer of divide between like the old man in the front and the younger person in the background So this is just another photo of this hectic scene as it was progressing as people were moving all over the place. And what I saw before taking the snapshot was that there was a more modern mo motorcycle moving one direction and then this older motorcycle moving the other. 
And I thought that it would be like a nice contrast between, an, again, old and new uh, moving in opposite directions. Sadly, uh, it really did not work out as well as I expected because there was just this, especially the this one man who's blocking the old motorcycle um, a little bit too much to my liking and makes the whole image a little bit too distraction and unclear. I think if he was not there and we get to see the old motorcycle design. This one's another photo that I personally like just because um, how close I got to this person pushing this cart forward. And this is where I sort of change zone focusing to be more close up. This next one, once again, it's the Olympus aperture priority, but I would call this like a accidental success maybe of how the person pulling the cart is like in the shadow and we get to just focus on the um, boxes that he's trying to carry though we only get to see like a little bit of the detail like in his nose and eyebrows just showing ever so like faintly but I think the motorcycle on the right hand side and the person um, on the left that's like touching and connected to the boxes that he's pulling are a little bit distracting. So in this next photo I think it's a, a much better version that I was trying to go for and this person on the bicycle it just looks like he's on a slight angle as if he's like moving and like surfing through the people and he wasn't really driving um, cycling that slowly either even though there were a lot of people and so he has like a lot of confidence to ride the bike with one hand at a decent speed and not and avoid the crowds basically so here we have a bunch of movers and what I saw in this photo is just how there's different elements of people doing different things Added that there was also this cool, like classic looking motorcycle in the scene as well. And so we just have different people, um, one guy on top of the truck doing one thing, the other guy's like got the box and is about to move into the shop. And then when moving into the shop, we see this other man sort of inside the shop and we don't really know who he is and just surrounded in sort of darkness. And so his white t-shirt is able to like pop out a little bit more with the framing. I think if anything I should have moved the framing a little bit to the right side as the left side is a little bit too distracting. This photo is something that I sort of also debated in my mind of like how is it gonna turn out? Is it really something um, worthwhile or an accidental success, let's say? But my conclusion that it's not quite a success. Because sure it because it was in shade, the shutter speed need to compensate for the exposure. And Sadly, the person who was mixing this food, which based on the image, we couldn't really see what it is, is a little bit blurry. Now, I would sort of say this might be an accidental success if the objects that are still like the cover of the pot on the right hand side is um, a little bit sharper. In this case, this was due to my hands shaking and not still enough. And so if the objects that are meant to be still are sort of sharp because I'm not shaking the camera as much and just let the guy who's mixing the food be blurry, blurry because he's moving a lot, then I would say that might be a, a better version. So here we have the guy once again 
um, mixing some food which I won't really say what it is exactly right now because the photo itself isn't that clear but I think this is a little bit better from what I said previously of the man mixing the food and letting his movement be blurred while everything else is um, sharp just because my hands needed to be much more steady um, unfortunately it's I held the camera a little bit not straight enough and so everything looks a little bit tilted so in this next photo again another sort of I think success because the girl is in the light and then everything in the shadow is just all darkened and so it just gives this nice center of attention for her as uh, she sort of walks through Sally is a little bit blurry I'm not sure if it's just her walking a little bit too fast or it was the zone focusing not being exactly correct but I think I really like how the background in shadow are just completely black allowing her to sort of just pop out of the scene Now this is a photo that is rather interesting to me and I shared this photo around to many of my friends to see if they could share with me what they thought this man was doing. Could they tell still by how blurry it, it is um, what this man is doing and what kind of expression he has. What is good blur, what is bad blur and I think I sort of gave a few explanations um, in the previous photos that I've shown oh I found this one to be good blur and this one to be bad blur and this one I think is still one of those good blurs that aren't too blurry we still get to tell the person's expression and the framing of it still I find to be um, acceptable This is one of the weirder scenes, I'll say, out of the day, where I came ac while walking through, I saw this moment where the parent was taking care of the child to help change uh, whether something accidental happened or not, and then the sister was sort of just keeping watch on her bicycle. Sadly, the whole scene just seems a little bit too dark, though I still think it's a nice interaction between parent and child in the kind of life that they're living in. This other one is also something that like gets me thinking a little bit whether the person in the shadow are they too dark and underexposed compared to the person in the light that is looking down upon them we don't know who sh exactly she's looking down upon they're too dark to see but we know that she's like looking down towards them as they try to sell these mangoes uh -huh. this is one of those scenes again I think that the blur and because it's still in um, the clouds kind of like move over so it's not as bright as it used to be and I think it's also a mix of mist zone focusing that made the image overall not as sharp as I wish it to be and also a mist in composition as well and like why I sort of talk about this photo is that um, the scene that I saw is just this 
young girl who's sort of selling these lottery tickets and on the right side has her mother taking care of her younger siblings but sadly I wasn't able to frame all of that together I just decided to go for the portrait shot quickly as this girl was interacting with a customer trying to buy the lottery but if I were to just change it to landscape mode then maybe I would have been able to tell a more full story on the situation of a young person helping to sell and make money for the family while the older mother is taking care of the younger siblings. This one I want to talk about because it's again one of those funny accidents or not quite an accident since I was waiting for this man to pass through and come into my frame let's say and it just so happens that I see he comes through and the zone is pretty sharp I'll say and a good high shutter speed so that the bike isn't in blur though maybe some people would prefer it to be blurred so that it shows some kind of movement. But something I wanted to focus on when I first saw this photo is that the helmet of the guy is like nicely covered or it's nicely inside the what it seems to be a bucket of fried chicken from the poster behind. And I just find that to be a little bit of a nice joke. Now this is one of those blurry photos that I think kind of works. Um, here, let's start with the well, let's start with the person on the right since it's easier to easiest to describe. We have them sort of still moving forward, and both of their legs are still sort of separated to show that they're still walking. Most of the time, you wouldn't want the, their legs to be so sort of together, right? And unless one of the legs are quite higher up and moving with the legs sort of spread out as they're walking forward it just gives a clearer pose now what i think anchors the photo together is still the slightly less blurry he's still blurred but less blurry man showing his back towards us and he's like about to buy some drinks from the shop stand at the background so I think he helps sort of center and anchors the photo um, while everyone else is in movement. And I think the strongest, per the strongest sort of person is the next guy um, where we see his right leg, I think, um, still relatively clear, especially his l foot is sort of much clearer as his other foot is swinging forward, which I guess a lot of nice sort of movement and momentum going forward and then we have another older lady I think with what it seems to be like a hat moving the opposite direction now if anything I think the there's a little bit too much negative space on the left hand side of this photo and I do wish that this old lady might have been a little bit to the left as well that she's a little bit too connected and touching the the guy um, dead center that if she was a little bit to the left then we have like a better separation between each of the people moving as we see between like the person on the most right hand side is much forward and then the guy buying the drinks is dead center and not touching either one of the people walking towards the right side and then sadly this um, what I think is a lady walking towards the left is a little bit too behind and touching the the guy trying to walk to the right and if she was a little bit further left and separated I think it would be a much stronger photo
Now this is the last photo and also the last photo in the film so I was like quite pressured to like try to get a good photo and sadly it didn't really turn out the way that I wanted to and do let me explain. Besides sort of documenting the current situation and with this trip in Chinatown this was before any lockdown just to be clear but there were still worries going around. So people were wearing more masks. As you can see throughout the photos, there's different people wearing masks all, everywhere. But for this monk, sadly, um, as he was walking through, he was actually wearing these very cool modern circular, or maybe it's more retro, if you were wearing circular um, shades, which gives a very um, unique, cool look. And I really wanted to take a photo of this monk wearing these round, uh, cool shades, but sadly by the time I got out my camera and focus he sadly put them away as you can see right now He's holding the the glass um, The sunglass case or whatever putting them away and so I think oh, it's such a miss Opportunity, but regardless, I think it's still a, a nice photo of the monk and Nice rim light on around his head to separate him from everyone else doing their business and just seeing a monk wearing a mask during these times is also something we don't see quite often every day. With that said, that is all the film photos and do let me know which one is your favorite photos or maybe I missed something with some of my own personal critique and analysis and hope to see you all next time. Bye for now.